guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. Kill Team from Games Workshop is probably my favorite Games Workshop game. It may not have the scale of Warhammer 40,000, or be fantasy like Age of Sigmar, or be a game for one of the four people that plays the Lord of the Rings game, but it is the best Games Workshop game. And it might seem kind of challenging to get into it because there have been so many big old expensive boxes, but it is actually Games Workshop's cheapest game to get into still. Currently, Kill Team is in its third season, which has me a little bit worried because Games Workshop typically has a three-year release cycle for their games, and so we can kind of expect Kill Team 4th edition or 3rd edition to be coming out sometime next year. But for now, we still got two boxes to go for Season 3, and Season 3 was kind of a shift for Kill Team in one very good way and one Eh, not so great way, but first a little recap of Kill Team. New Kill Team came out in 2022 with the incredible box Octaris. The Orc Commandos versus the Veteran Guardsmen, the Krieg. All of the terrain you could ever need and the best terrain in my opinion for Kill Team with tons and tons of heavy terrain, which is essential for such a heavily shooting game. It was an incredible box and a $199 box, very expensive, and the rest of that year was just as punishing for Kill Team. We got three more boxes, Chalmath, Nakmund, and Morak, and each one actually went up in price, even though it was kind of the same product, two teams and a little bit of Games Workshop terrain. Although, once we got into Season 2 of Kill Team 2022, things got better and worse with Into the Dark, and we kind of got onto this release cycle. At the start of every year, we would get a big box with the new Kill Team terrain. Octaris had the orc landscape, the orc mech factory, or just an orc bunker that could be broken up, and it was perfect, three inch tall walls, nice vantage. Into the Dark introduced the Into the Dark terrain style, which was essentially a Zone Mortalis style maze. I actually still haven't gotten a chance to play Zone Mortalis, but I've heard very good things. And according to the people who play it a lot, it does do a really good job of switching how the teams play because Kill Team is actually a fairly balanced game. There are some matchups that are a little bit trickier than others, but in general, all like 30 plus Kill Teams can play against each other just fine. Into the Dark swaps some things out so that the more close combat focused teams are a little bit better than the more shooty focused teams which is really nice because close combat is really fun, just like massacring your opponent in vicious hand-to-hand -hand combat. And in Kill Team, there are no saves taken in close combat, or no armor saves taken in close combat. So if you're one little guardsman, you can run up to a space marine and just punch them, and it will do damage. You'll die when the space marine punches you back, but you will take some wounds off of that space marine, which is absolutely hilarious. Kill Team was chugging along like that until we got to this year. This year, things changed, for better and for worse. The problem that existed with Kill Team is these gigantic boxes, and they were super inflated because of the terrain they came with, especially the Into the Dark boxes. Soul Shackle, Shadow Vaults, and Gallow Fall all came with the Into the Dark, like a full set of Into the Dark terrain, which is too much Into the Dark terrain. And I think Games Workshop hopefully recognized this. So with this year's boxes, they've actually separated the terrain and the miniatures, reducing the price dramatically. So instead of costing almost $200, now the boxes cost $130, which split right down the middle means you're pretty much just paying retail for the kill teams. And you do, for some reason, get like three pieces of scatter terrain, don't really know why, doesn't seem super necessary, but it's not too bad, especially when the price is decent. And now that the terrain is actually separate, you'll never buy it again. <laughs> I have, I have so much into the dark terrain. I have so much. And ugh, let's be honest, it's never, it's never ever gonna get built. The great thing about the previous two seasons of Kill Team is every single box was broken into one brand spanking new thing and one existing thing with an upgrade sprue to make it a little bit more unique but the new things were so cool, and there were things that never would have existed without Kill Team. Chaos Beastmen, Adeptus Erbetes, Traitor Guardsmen. 
These teams exist for Kill Team, and they're a little slice of 40k that we just would not see with the normal release schedule for Warhammer 40,000. Moving into this third year of Kill Team 2nd Edition, though, things have changed a little bit. We've gotten two boxes revealed so far. One of them is available to purchase if it's still in stock, and then the next one is coming up soon. We've got Salvation and Nightmare. Salvation came with Space Marine Scouts and Striking Scorpions, which, although I'm sure very fun kill teams, don't really feel very kill teamy because certainly they were meant for 40k. These kits were designed for 40k. They're needed in 40k because Striking Scorpions are currently sculpts from like the 90s and Space Marine Scouts are desperately needed. I need them for my Black Templar army. And yet they're coming to kill team first. Not horrible, but it is a little bit feel bads because 40K players are probably thinking, I really want these models. Don't care about kill team. I don't want to have to wait for three months for these to come out separately. And for kill team players, it's just not as unique as we're used to. And the trend continued with Nightmare. Nightmare is going to feature Drukhari Mandrakes and Chaos Nightlords. Once again, two things kind of more meant for big 40k, but I suppose it is fine that it fits into Kill Team. It's fine, everything's fine, and honestly, it doesn't really matter that much because Kill Team isn't about buying every single one of these big boxes that come out, even though I've bought most of them. And looking at the prices, it's I don't I don't like to think about it. But Really, Kill Team is an incredibly cheap game to get into because you don't need much. When you go on the, on the Kill Team page on the Games Workshop Warhammer store, you'll see tons and tons and tons of different materials, but actually, the only thing you need is your box of your dudes. And with almost 30 Kill Teams to pick from, there is a lot of variety. Also on the web store, you'll see a whole bunch of books. You don't, you really, you don't need to buy those books. You really don't. Uh, you didn't hear this from me, but, you know, if you uh, go online, you might be able to, uh, to find the old rules available. And that's what makes Kill Team Games Workshop's cheapest game. Even Underworlds requires you to buy into at least one of those big boxes to get a hold of the board and the proprietary cards. Kill Team, you really only need the miniatures. Now, what miniatures do you need to buy? Well, any of the Kill Teams will work great from the Games Workshop web store. Most of them are either bespoke things for Kill Team or an existing 40k unit that has one extra sprue to make your guys a little bit more customizable and give you some of the unique operatives that come in your Kill Team. There are a few Kill Teams that have come out over the years in things like White Dwarf, like my personal favorite Kill Team, the Adeptus Mechanicus Hunter Clade, and I would definitely say honorable mention goes to the Orc Commandos for just being a great Kill Team. What's great about the Orc Commandos is they don't really synergize as well as a lot of other teams, where other teams require you to be near other operatives or tag team operatives to get the most out of their benefits. Every single orc is kind of just his own guy with a pretty decent gun and pretty good fists. So orcs can play super aggressively and super dumb and still do a great job on the battlefield. There's also something to be said for the original Kill Team Compendium. There's now a updated Kill Team Compendium, Kill Team Compendium 2023, that does feature all of the rules for the currently released Kill Teams. Not a bad little book, but once again, you can find those rules online. The original Kill Team Compendium launched with Octaris and it featured rules to use your existing Warhammer 40k collections in Kill Team. And basically all of those teams are now either defunct replaced or just completely obsolete. Although I would say that there is one team in that compendium. Grey Knights are, are sort of still something, but there is one team in that book that I think everybody should own, especially if you're trying to get people into the game of Kill Team, and that is Custodes. Custodes is a four man kill team. All four of them can be completely identical, and it is a great kill team because they're incredibly strong, incredibly powerful, shoot good, fight good, if you want something really, really easy to hand to somebody and say, we're going to play Kill Team right now, here's one page of rules, read them real quick, you'll be off to the races playing the game. That is a really, really good team for learning the game of Kill Team, because Kill Team can be very, very, not difficult, but a little bit much. A lot of your, every single one of your operatives is going to have its own unique set of rules, set of abilities, and it's going to take a few games to really learn your team and get the hang of it so that you can play well, because Kill Team is also a very sweaty, competitive game. When Sean and I are playing Kill Team, it is quick 
It is violence and it is every move you make. It has to be planned and executed perfectly. If you start losing operatives too soon, the game is over. If you accidentally give your opponent a little bit too much, then you, the game is over. You wanna be trading units. Sometimes you know, you'll let a guy die so that you can then kill an operative because you killed the right operative and your opponent killed the wrong operative. And so that gives you the tactical advantage. Any of the kill teams would make a great kill team. Really, you should probably just pick the kill team that appeals to you most in terms of looks. And another great thing, and the thing that's really gotten me into kill team is the opportunity for conversion because you only have between six and 14 dudes. So it's really not a big deal if you really want to splash out and do like all head swaps, crazy armor, kit bashing, modifying the weapons. It's really, really fun, and it's really easy to see the light at the end of the tunnel. If you want to do a custom 40k army, that's like 100 miniatures, but a custom kill team might be six. So it's really, really fun to really splash out on your hobby time and make your guys really personal and unique to you. And if you really want to know about the gaming, you can go online and find the rules to find out which kill team has the play style you want. Although most kill teams have a pretty good mix between close combat and ranged attacks, some of them skew pretty heavily, like the Tau don't really want to get into close combat, but the Felgor Ravagers, the Chaos Beastmen, are basically only close combat. Oh, and they're so much fun to play. Just the definition of aggression. And their special ability, each kill team has a special ability that's like unique for that faction, the Felgor Ravagers don't die the first time they die. They die, but they stay on the table. They get one more turn of activating where they should be punching something, and then they drop dead. It is absolutely fantastic. And it kind of means that they're immortal for one turn. It's, ah, oh, it's so much fun. And it's just so aggressive. It's a really, really fun team. I am really looking forward to those last two boxes of Kill Team, even though they're probably gonna be something a little bit more meant for, for 40K, I'm still really interested in the Mandrakes. Those guys are probably gonna be really, really fun because the lore of the Mandrakes is that they physically appear from the shadows. You know, you're just walking along and the sun's casting your shadow behind you, and all of a sudden there is a Mandrake behind you. And the Night Lords are pretty darn cool, but I've actually already made a Night Lords Kill Team, so really, I'm the first person in the world to already have my Night Lord's kill team all built and ready to rock and roll. Also, there's two different types of kill teams in terms of playstyle. There's Horde and there's Elite. Elite teams typically are the Space Marines. Most people seem to play the Space Marines. I think it's just because they're the most popular. But the Horde kill teams can be really, really fun because you have so many more bodies to play around with. And you typically make more use of cover, concealment, and terrain because you kind of can swarm across the entire board. And even if you lose an operative here and there, you still have plenty of guys to do some work. Where with an elite kill team, you really have to think about every single move you make. Because if you lose one of your six guys early on, that can make the game quite a bit more challenging. Kill Team 2022 is an absolutely fantastic game. I played tons of Kill Team 2018, and that was also an okay game. But it was basically just baby Warhammer 40,000. And as soon as I played Kill Team 2022, I noticed, oh, the old Kill Team kind of sucks. Where new Kill Team is absolutely fantastic. And it's a way to play a Games Workshop game for not that much money. Most teams cost about 60 bucks, some teams a little bit more. And some teams you do have to buy two boxes of things to get all of the operatives you could possibly want for the game. But it's actually the cheapest way to get into a Games Workshop's game and it just happens to be Games Workshop's best game. The only thing I can think of that is even better than Kill Team is the terrain available on our Patreon. That would be perfect for Kill Team. Over there, we have a brand new STL terrain set every single month, and this month we have the Gothic Modular Buildings. This set of L-shaped walls was designed with competitive wargaming in mind. They are the perfect size, the perfect shape, they have the appropriate footprints, and they have opening and closing shuttered windows, perfect for all of your line of sight blocking needs. Kill Team 2022 is absolutely fantastic. Do not feel pressured into buying any of the big old Kill Team boxes, and for sure don't go to eBay scalpers and purchase one of the old boxes for an exorbitant price. All of that stuff is currently available. You can use whatever terrain you want or just stuff you have lying around and be playing at Kill Team today. Thanks for watching.